welcome everybody who's joining us for this SU Teaches SU presentation. Um, <clears throat> we have a, a, a few guests here to give us information on, on some of the specialty programs we have here at, at Southwest University. Uh, so we have with us today, Ms. Rebecca Henningham. She's the Imaging Department Assistant. And so she's uh, you know, relatively new here at Southwest University, so we're excited to have her be part of the team. She has a bachelor's in bilingual executive communications uh, she received from in Panama. And she said that her hobbies are to learn about space in NASA and Mars, and she's a huge Harry Potter fan. So if uh, <clears throat> I have to test her Harry Potter knowledge, because I think I'm probably a bigger Harry Potter fan than she is. Uh, we have Ms. Andrea Fong, uh, who's with us here as well. She's the uh, helps with the nursing department, so one of the, the nursing coordinators. Um, she's a graduate from from Southwest University as well, and she's been here for for uh, working with us for about a year, year and a half maybe. Yeah. So she's a great resource. Also, if you have uh, questions about the uh, the specialty programs and specifically nursing. Uh, I know she loves to draw a lot. She does doodles for everybody. So, so if you have any <clears throat> need for drawings, you can go to her for that. And then we have Dr. Javier Gutierrez, who's one of the associate deans here at Southwest University. Uh, he oversees the nursing, imaging, opto, and the surge tech programs. Um, he's from Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua. He got his MD from Wasejota, Jota, and he's been working here at Southwest University for almost seven years. Uh, he started as a substitute teacher went to a full-time MA uh, instructor, then worked uh, as an instructor for the MLT program. Um, and so him and I have worked together for, for quite a long time. So I consider myself fortunate to, to have been able to work with such a great guy. And he loves Star Wars. I mean, almost every day you can see him with a different Star Wars tie or his, his socks. And, and so if you have any Star Wars knickknacks that you're considering throwing away, just give them to him and he'll be happy to take them off your hands. Um, but I'll let these these wonderful people take over. Uh, and again, they're going to be giving us information on, on the specialty programs, how to qualify for them, and some advice on on how to have a strong application since they are very high demand programs. But I'll, I'll, I'll let them take over now. So thank you guys for, for giving us your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ramos, for, for that presentation. Uh, I would like to see that uh, challenge, challenge, Becca, five. I don't know if it's pushing it too much, but uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it's, it's been great working with you uh, the last six years. It's been uh, very challenging, but I'm happy for that. So, you know, now jumping into our, our presentation, like Dr. Ramos mentioned, uh, I'm the Associate Dean for the, for the Specialty Programs. Uh, that includes nursing, imaging, uh, surgery, surgery tech, and ophthalmology tech. So in this case, we're gonna talk only about the emission programs, which includes radiology, EMS being the two main ones, but also we have MRI and CT. And nursing, we're gonna talk about the ADM. Now these two programs, the, the highlight that they have is that students, they need extra requirements in order to get into those programs. You know, if, uh, if you're from graduate from high school, unfortunately, you cannot get in. You need certain prerequisites in order to apply. And that's what we're gonna be doing today, explaining how to get into nursing and And as we go on, you're more than one way to. So make sure that uh, you understand different ways to qualify uh, for, to be a candidate. And uh, if you have, don't be afraid, don't be shy. Reach out to us and we can get more details regarding the, the entrance of purposes. We're going to start with uh, uh, Mercy. So we're going to jump to Andrea. She has a little presentation and uh, take it away. Hello, everyone. Um, just give me a minute. My computer is acting crazy, but let me open the presentation for you and I'll be sharing a beautiful, nice presentation um, so we can explain everything that it's to know about nursing. So as Dr. Gutierrez mentioned, nursing program, it's one of the many programs on the school that it's considered a specialty, since you can just not walk in and join to this program specific. So the main need uh, for the nursing program 
And me, all right, share a screen. So let's start here. And there we go. Can you see my share screen right here? Start. So this is going to be my presentation. I hope everybody gets to enjoy it. Um, so the College of Nursing here at Southwest University, we are considered a college because we not only offer the associate degree program for nursing, um, we as well offer the bachelor program for nursing. So in order to qualify, first of all, the ADM program and the bachelor's in nursing here at Southwest um, University, it's accredited by TCNE, which is the Commission in College of Nursing Education. The requirements to join to the nursing program as an SU student. So the main thing it's going to be the competition of an allied health science degree. This could be medical lab assisting, MLT, which is medical lab technician, um, billing and coding, health administration, anything that is related with the health sciences. And you are going to be considered an SU student for two years after your graduation. So anywhere after two years, um, you are not longer considered an SU student. So in order to qualify as an SU student, you are going to need a GPA that it's higher than 3.5, 90% attendance, no behavioral misconducts, an interview with your admissions rep. Um, this is extremely important in the case that you don't qualify or you don't meet the requirements um, when it comes to your GPA and attendance. Your student representative advisor, he's going or she is going to give you um, better directions. They're going to let you know if you qualify and what would be the best case scenario for you um, regarding graduation dates, start dates, price, uh, financial aid, any questions that you have regarding um, what it's going to be the enrollment or the next steps to take on your education. So after you're ready to talk to your admissions rep, you need to take an exam, which is called a HESI admissions assessment, and you need to score a 75. So for this, for the 75, and for the outside students, we don't only take in students from Southwest University, many of our students as well are outside students. So in order to qualify as an outside student, you need to have your bachelor's degree or higher um, education. Um, for that, you, we are going to require a transcript from you and or if you have your bachelor's or any higher level of education, you as well are gonna be required to have an active certification. This could be an LVN, LPN, CMA, CNA, um, EMT, CCHT, anything that it's once again related to the health sciences. So the most important thing besides having your active certification is to have two years of active experience. So your experience is gonna come all together with your resume, your transcripts if needed. Um, once again, your interview with admissions counselors and your HESI exam. So as well for the HESI, you need to have a 75 in order to be considered a candidate for a program. So what is the HESI? So HESI admissions exam, it's pretty much a standardized test that, um, for nursing in the case of admissions. Um, it's only, uh, on the fields of reading comprehension, grammar, and math. So those are the only uh, three fields that you're gonna be getting tested at. Um, the test is gonna be 155 questions to 175. You will have two hours and 30 minutes to complete your exam. And like I mentioned before, you need to score a 75 or higher in order to be considered a candidate for a program. After you tested your first time, you are going to have a second opportunity. So it's not only one chance and your second opportunity, either you failed your first one and you decided to take a second chance. Um, we are going to take in your second opportunity as well, but as well, if you failed, your, if you didn't fail, but you don't like your score in your first attempt, you can as well take your second attempt um, just to have a higher score. So the out of pocket for the exam, it's gonna be $45 per test you take, and it's gonna be non-refundable. You get to pay the day of your exam. So if you do a no show, or you decide not just not to take your exam, you don't need to worry about your money. So going back to the HESI. So HESI exam, like I said, it's gonna be 155 questions, and you get only tested on the fields of reading comprehension, grammar, and math. 
Um, it's an SAT level. So on the math portion, you're going to see a lot of fractions, algebra, conversions, um, all that fun stuff. So you are going to have two hours and 30 minutes. You need to score a 75 or higher. And you're going to have two testing opportunities. Uh, once you already failed your second opportunity, um, you are going to pretty much wait until the next te testing cycle is open and wait till the next admissions period for the program. So each exam attempt, it's going to be $45 non-refundable that you get to pay on the day of your exam. What happens after the HESI? After you um, successfully complete the HESI, you score 75 or higher, you would need to complete an interview with me or with any of our faculty members uh, for the nursing program. 500 word essay um, in APA format. It's extremely important that you work the APA. Um, I do read all the essays. Uh, they need to have your cover page, double space, um, your new times drama on 112. Um, reference if needed with a prompt, what would you like to be a nurse? And of course, you can title your essay as ever you like. So you're going to as well require a minimum of two letters of recommendation on a professional level. Uh, professional level pretty much is your instructor, supervisor, co-worker, employer, anybody who knows you outside your home and how you develop yourself in a professional environment. Um, your school transcripts if needed. So if needed, it's if you have your bachelor, uh, bachelor's degree and that's how you're applying. And once again, your resume. So about the program. So let's keep in mind um, here at Southwest University, we are a type of different type of education. We are fast track programs. So for the associate in nursing, we are talking about finishing the program in two years. It, it's a fast track. So you are to learn um, what it usually will take you a semester in six weeks. So you need to consider that. Um, and the nursing program, we do follow a policy pretty much. We need you to have 100% um, attendance. Of course, you're going to have excuse absences, but they are going to be only in really, really, um, I would say, emergency situations. Just try to avoid it. If you are going to apply to a nursing program, just taking in mind that it's time consuming. You need a lot of passion and dedication to go through it. Uh, a main thing that many people ask all the time, it's about the scheduling. Um, as many other programs, you know, you have your schedules or it's usually um, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday here in the nursing program. We are going to be looking at a schedule that it's going to be 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday for the very first uh, for six terms, your first six terms. In your seventh term, you're going to start your clinical rotation. So for your clinical rotations, um, you need to be available 24 seven. It's not like you're going to be working 24 hours a day for seven days a week. Uh, it's more that you need to be available in case that your clinical rotations are assigned during the weekends or for um, night shifts for the hospitals, all right? So the next one, a little bit more about the program. So the College of Nursing consists of two buildings. It's going to be the 1000 building where it's the library and then it's going to be the 900 building. We have two classrooms and four labs. Um, all the labs are equipped with mannequins and all the equipment needing to, uh, needed to simulate uh, pretty much a hospital facility. Um, in the labs, you're going to learn different skills and practices that you later on when you get to your clinical rotations, we uh, will implement on real patients, all right? So after you graduate your program, you are going to be able to qualify to take the NCLEX, which is a, registry, a nursing registry. Um, and once you've done that, if you're working and if you wish, you can as well continue your education in our BSN program, which is the Bachelor's in Science, Science of Nursing. So your clinical rotations, that's another question that many students um, ask when they come in here to my office. During your clinical rotations, you will be able to practice all the skills learned in class in a real nursing environment. You're going to go to hospitals, psychiatric centers, pediatrics, geriatric centers, et cetera. So it's really hands on. It's going to be for around 10 terms. So 60 weeks of your life that you're going to spend on a hospital, getting your hands on training with real patients. Um, you will be in clinical rotation, yes, for nine months, nine terms to 10, 10 around 60 weeks, like I mentioned. 
And Southwest University, it's affiliated with different clinics, hospital facilities in our community. So we're looking uh, hospitals like Peak, Rio Vista Sag Center, um, UMC, Las Palmas, Children's. So all the big hospitals are places where you're going to get to experience your clinical rotations. These are just some images um, of our most popular hospitals where we send students to Sol Las Palmas University Medical Center, um, Children's. Um, this is going to be the nursing building. So here next to the SU library, the gray building to the right, it's going to be the nursing building. Uh, this is one of the mannequins that we have that it's just the torso, but you get to see, you get to practice tracheotomies and pretty much it has all the nasal cavities and everything ready uh, for procedures. So all the, uh, the three labs are in the nursing buildings have six beds, um, which six mannequins. So we have three labs in the nursing building and one more that it's about to open in the 900 building. So this is going to be your classroom when you first start. As you can see, it's a pretty big classroom um, that you are not going to get to use it as often because the nursing program here, it's a lot of hands-on, a lot of open labs and a lot of different activities with your classmates and your instructors. So my contact information, as last, my name is once again, Andrea Fong. One, one thing that G, uh, Dr. Ramos did not mention, I'm a huge Simpsons fan. So if you ever want to give me something, it's about the Simpsons. My email address, it's going to be afong at startwithuniversity.edu. My extension, it's going to be 1213. And my nursing, the nursing office, it's locating, located on the 600 building on the second floor next to financial aid. And I'm usually here 8 a.m., 8.30 until 5.30 or 6, except on Fridays when I leave early around 2 or 3. All right, so that's pretty much all from me. So if you have any questions, concerns, please let me know uh, so I can answer all your questions. Thank you very much for that presentation. Now, uh, for all of you right now watching this uh, stream, all of you students, and you're interested in nursing, don't wait until you're on the last term of the MA program or MLT or medical uh, You know, reach out to us as soon as you can. That way we can uh, give you more specific details and also we can see where you stand in your program and let you know, hey, you know what? You need to improve on this or you can do the same or you know you need to come back and see me hey, that'll be the best time for you to take this or start it so please if you have an interest on in, in nursing don't don't wait until the last minute to talk to us and like andrea mentioned you know you talk to her uh same thing over here we talk to Dr. the nursing director on that night yeah. all of us are uh, available if you have any questions Okay, so now we're gonna jump to the admission programs and uh, Rebecca will give us uh, also a presentation regarding the requirements. Uh, keep your ears open. Uh, they're very similar, 90% of them, but <clears throat> here we go. So let us uh, share the screen. Find it over here. Oh, well, Dr. D is getting that ready. Well, hi guys, uh, my name is Rebecca. Like Dr. Ramos said, yes, I'm early new to the program. Um, I started a month ago. However, I'm really fascinated about everything about the imaging department. And that's going to be shown in this presentation. Um, so we're just going to go over the same thing that Andrea went over about nursing, but now about the imaging programs. Um, so we do offer several programs. However, our main ones are um, radiology program and the sonography. So as you can see, we offer different programs. Um, we have the Diagnostic Medical Sonographer. The program is about 24 months. Um, we have the X-ray Technologies, uh, which is also about 24 months. Um, we have the Bachelor's in Radiology Management. It's a program completely online, and it will last 14 months. We have the MRI program, also that lasts um, about two years. Um, we have the Computer Tomography Certification Program, um, that lasts about nine months. Um, our classes are completely hybrid and we do accept some credit transfers. Um, so 
have more questions about that, you can always refer to your admissions um, advisor. They'll have more information about that and they'll guide you to the right way. Um, we do have, um, these are the, the governance for our programs. Um, we give the certifications to our students once they're able to pass their boards and their exams. Um, so these are the different boards that we buy. Yes, uh, uh, let me make a comment. Uh, here we have a uh, ARDMS. Right now we're going through an audit with them. Our students for sonography at the moment, they are not certified by ARDMS. Like I mentioned, we're going up to the audit. And once uh, we finish the audit, we'll uh, provide an update regarding certain ARDMS. In the meantime, all the students regarding sonography getting uh, credited by ARRT. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and just as Andrea went over the different entrance requirements for nursing, we have very similar requirements. Um, one of them is that if you are a graduate from um, SU and you have any of the programs from any of the allied um, health sciences, MA, MLT, MBCO, or HA, um, um, we do require that for you to start on any of the imaging programs. Also for any students that are outside um, SU and you do have a medical background, we do require for you to show your certification. Um, just as Andrea mentioned, it could be um, two years of experience as a CMA, CNA, paramedic, EMT, CCHT, etc. Um, also, now if you're a student that you don't have any medical background, we do require for you to have any degree in any health science and you must have a 3.5 GPA or um, you have a, a master's degree. Um, it's really important that you have a health science degree to have students that want to come with different degrees that don't apply. So it does have to be a um, health science for you to be able to start in the imaging programs. Other requirements that we do have, and they're really extremely important, um, you must have a 3.5 GPA or higher because um, our program requires it. Um, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of studying. So we need to know that our students are going to put 110% on these programs um, so they can be able to graduate. You need to have a minimum of attendance of a 90% or above. Um, you need to make sure that you're also going to be here on class. You're going to be present because this is hands-on and there's a lot of material that you're going to cover and it's really important that you're here. Also, no write-ups or any behavioral misconducts. A big one is that you must schedule an interview with the program director. Our program directors like to meet their students. Why? Because they like to introduce what you're about to get into. They want to explain everything to you from the moment that you start in class all the way to the moment that you're going to start working on the field. Because they want to, um, they want you to know exactly what you're going to be facing. So they're the best people to be able to teach you that or um, let you know about it. So please schedule your interview with the program director. You can do that through me. Um, at the end of the, inter uh, the presentation, I'm going to show my contact information. Um, and also make sure that you meet your um, admissions counselor. Why? Because they're going to go over everything that you have, um, credits, um, your GPA, just to be able to make sure that you do qualify for this program um, to be able to start as soon as possible. Now, a big, big one, the HESI exam. Um, just as Andrea mentioned, all of our students must take the HESI exam. Why is it so big? Because a lot of the students don't pass the HESI exam. So um, the HESI exam will test you on reading comprehension, math, anatomy, and physiology. Um, we do um, give you the guide, which is the HESI fifth edition. Um, there's a lot of free tools online where you can practice before you take your HESI exam. And I think they're really, really helpful for you to know what you're about to get yourself into. You must get a passing grade of 70% or higher to be pre-approved for the program. Um, testing for our programs is always open and it's for Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Um, you can always schedule it with Ms. Taisha Goodrich. Um, I could hear her email or you can contact her, let her know um, that you're interested in taking the HESI exam for the imaging programs um, and she'll let you know what is the next available date um, where you can test. Um, the cost is the same, um, it's $45. Um, and you only have three attempts per start date um, to be accepted into one of the imaging programs. 
So make sure that you really um, take this exam really seriously because it's super important for you to be admitted to the program. Once you have done um, the previous steps that I mentioned, you become a pre-approved student for the imaging programs. What does that mean? There's still several requirements that we're gonna go over before we accept you to the program. Uh, you must provide us with two letters of recommendation, one personal, one professional can get too professional, that's even better. Um, we do need to receive a proof of your ID. Um, it could be social ID, birth certificate, et cetera. Um, we do need proof of your um, immunizations, especially the TIDAP and flu shots, because um, they'll be required for you once you go to externship. So um, it's really important that we get those. Um, you must go over a physical exam. Um, we'll provide you with the form and then you'll Medical, your care, um, medical provider, um, so they can go ahead and sign it and then you can send it back to us. Also make sure that you provide us with our high school diploma or because um, we do need that information as well. Just as Andrea mentioned, we do need the 500 word essay um, is the APA 7 edition format. We do read your essays, the program directors read your essays, and that is a good way for you to make a good, good impression about yourself and why you wanna get into the imaging programs. Um, you do have certain forms that will be signed once you pass your HESI. Um, usually Ms. Tisha will bring you to me so we can um, go over those paperwork. And it's basically just forms and applications into the imaging programs. Um, also make sure that you have met with admissions and financial aid. Um, those are really um, important steps that you must take once you have passed uh, your HESI exam um, because they have to go for their own paper as well. Now, if you are an, a student um, that you do have a medical background, don't have a medical background, we do require for you to submit a resume. We'd like to know more about you, your experience, um, so you, you can provide us with your resume, that would be awesome as well. And the school transcripts, um, both uh, as well as our students, outside students with and without any medical background, we do need to see your um, school transcript so that we can confirm that you do have a 3.5 GPA or higher to be accepted into our programs. Now, here are some basic tips on um, for you to qualify for these programs. As I mentioned previously, study for the HESI. Take it seriously. This exam is super important. It's not easy. Um, I've been able to see a lot of students um, go in and get out crying because they couldn't make it. But if you study hard and you use the tools that are available online for you to practice for your HESI, I'm more than sure that you'll be able to um, get a passing grade of 70% or higher. Make sure that you schedule your interview with the director again. If you can hear them talking about their programs, you'll be amazed of all the great things that they have to say about it. But also they're gonna let you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. They're gonna let you know what you're gonna see, what you're gonna learn, um, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. They'll just go over it with you. And it's a good way for you to make sure if you wanna go into the imaging programs or you would like to do something different. Make sure that you work on your grades so you can get a good GPA. Um, it's sad for us to have to turn down a student that doesn't have a qualifying GPA. So make sure that you're working in your current program, that you're working as hard as you can so you can really get a qualifying GPA. And fourth, and it's not the least important, um, um, but just make sure that when you write your essay, um, you're really showing what made you interested in the specific um, imaging program that you would like to go in. If it's either sonography or if it's the x-ray programs, make sure that you portray that um, on your paper. Remember, it's an APA um, format, the seventh edition, and remember that we all read it and the directors we're reading is a good way for you to introduce yourself to them and also let them make me interested in the specific selection. What do we expect from you? We'll expect a lot, but mainly um, want to make sure that you graduate from these programs. Um, as a knowledgeable and competent entry-level technologist, um, we want professionalism. Why? Because you're gonna go in the field and you're gonna be not only representing the university, but you're also gonna be representing yourself. You wanna portray yourself as a professional and that you know what you're doing. Make sure that you're showing mature and responsible behavior 
both inside and outside of the classroom and dedication. These programs, they're so fast and you must dedicate 100% to all of them um, in everything that you do. So this is just, um, and it's just letting you know what different things you can go into after you finish your either x-ray or sonography program. Um, this is our imaging building, it's a 700 building. Um, and we do have um, several labs and we're currently working on a new lab that will have more equipment um, for everyone to do more hands-on practice for the imaging programs. Just as Andrea mentioned for the um, nursing programs, you also work with major hospitals such as Del Sol, um, Imaging, Las Palmas del Sol, University Medical Center, um, Hospitals of Providence East, um, El Paso Children's and Foundations. So. We're going to be um, on these hospitals for you to practice as well. So it's really important for you to continue to show professionalism because this is a good way for you to portray yourself and be able to get a job opportunity right there and there while you're on your clinical um, part of your terms. These are just some pictures of what you could be looking into. Just a couple of days ago, I was able to see one of these pictures live and it just was super amazing. So you guys will be able to see this daily. And it's just not taking pictures. You're talking about people's lives, health that you're going to be dealing with. So it's really, really important um, that you take this degree seriously. So we do have some future start dates coming up. Um, for the x-ray program, we have um, September 20, um, 27th coming up. And then for some students, we know that it's hard for them to do um, uh, morning uh, classes. So we do have an evening report that will start on November the 8th. So if that's something that um, is making you interested, you can always speak with your um, admissions advisor and they'll be able to guide you on that as well. For the sonography program, we're going to be starting on November 8th. And for radiology management at the moment, um, we think it's going to be November the 8th. But if there's any chances, um, your admissions counselor will also be able to let you know. And lastly, well, just our contact information, um, Rebecca Henningham, I'm the Imaging Department Assistant. I have my email and my phone number. The extension is 1215. I'm usually here Monday to Friday, 8 to 4. Um, but if not, you can always reach me through email. And if you would like to know more, um, you also have Director of College of Imaging, Dr. Gerardo um, Ortiz, I'm sorry. And he's also, he's always willing to talk with students that are interested in the program. He will let you know everything that you need to know about. Them. So, um, this is much. Um, this is pretty much everything about the imaging department. If you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask, and you can always reach us on email or phone. Well, uh, thank you very much. Let me change this over here. Okay, so same thing for all of you interested in the in the imaging programs, radiology, DMS being the main ones. Uh, don't wait until you're on the externship to reach out to us. If you're even on the first, second term of the MA, MOT, or other programs, you know, come give us a visit. Ask what you need to do, where you stand, and you know how can can you reach those uh, prerequisite goals in order for you to qualify to do the HESI exam. So, if uh, anyone has questions, uh, now's the time. All right, so uh, this is uh, Dr. Ramos speaking. Um, so I had a question, you know, for myself, and I guess this goes for for Rebecca and Andrea for the, the both different programs and Dr. G. If you have some insight as well, we'd be very appreciative appreciative to hear that. Uh, but what part in the application process have you guys noticed uh, students struggle with the most? So. I feel like in the nursing program in specific, um, the students don't come to the realization how time consuming can the nursing program be. At the end, um, while once you're already past their HESI, they're already completed financially and everything, um, they just realize that it's going to be more demanding than an eight to five job. It's going to be more than that. Even if you're currently working, um, I would strongly suggest to you, and if you're planning to apply to the nursing program or the imaging pro 
program to talk to your employers let them know that you're planning to apply to see what scheduling arrangements can they do um, if you could start working part-time or if you can have an open schedule in your job um, just make sure that you're going to have the flexibility to be in class and to comply with your clinical rotations because uh, it's extremely important like i said both programs um, are extremely demanding both the, you need to maintain a 75% testing average in order to be in the program. So they are extremely demanding. If you are working, uh, please, please consider um, time management because you are going to need it. That's going to be key in order to finish any other programs on the specialty. Um, it's I, I believe like on the nursing program, we are we're seeing like 200 applicants and at the end this past cohort we stayed with only 75 and many of them um were having troubles because of the work um i know we all human beings we have lives aside work and school um, but if you have family if you're working if you have kids please take in mind the arrangements that you are going to need in order to successfully complete the program because it's really demanding and you need to really put, like I said, passion, dedication, and have support of your loved ones and most likely of your employers because um, you're gonna need it. It's hard. Adding to that, I guess the other thing that uh, we see a lot of struggle is regarding the scheduling. Uh, one thing that we see is that when they come in and they schedule it, they'll ask, so uh, when their program starts, an example here, you know, November 8th. Oh, put me on November 7th. I want to do the test on November 7th. And for some reason, they don't take it seriously, so they fail. And then they come back to us again, like, okay, I need to do it again. Well, you know, when you schedule a HESI exam, just don't wait until the last day to, to do it. Like we mentioned, person, uh, there's two attempts for imaging, uh, there's three attempts. So please take advantage of that opportunity. Don't be afraid to schedule it sooner. That way, for some reason, you don't need the score that we asked for either program. Oh, yeah, now you have the chance to take a second time and uh, have the proper time to, to schedule. And if I can add one last thing, one thing that I've been hearing a lot is that students um, think that it's gonna be an easy journey but it's not, there's a lot of studying, a lot of reading. So if you're not ready for um, to do any of that, maybe this may not be the right path for you because it's gonna require a lot of dedication, a lot of time reading, a lot of studying. So this is gonna be uh, a, a difficult journey, but I'm sure that if you send to it, it will. Any other question? So we did have a question submitted by by a viewer, Ms. Cortez. Um, they were asking about the placement process. Once you know, once a student applies and goes through the program, can you give us information about how you know job assistance is provided to the students or for seeking a job, or you know, any any insights you can offer on, on that? So as a personal experience, and I know because it happens to me every day, uh, we do receive every day calls from hospitals, clinics, um, hospice center, home health care centers, um, asking us for students. Um, there is a huge market for op opportunities. It is a competitive program to go in, but once you're in, you don't need to compete with your fellow students. There is gonna be a job opportunity for every single student. Many times you don't need to apply because the places are going to be looking forward um, to hire you. And this is like Re Rebecca mentioned you, you're gonna be dealing with big hospitals, big clinics here in El Paso. So once you're there, they're, you're gonna give an impression. And most likely they're going to tell you on your last day on that rotation and say, hey, once you're done, come back because we want you here. Uh, that's more, that it's most likely the case for all the students. Um, hospitals and clinics are always looking for nursing, for um, MRI techs, for um, DMM, for sonographers, for radiology techs. Um, they're extremely interested. It's a big market that needs a lot, a lot of people and as this pandemic has shown us the health the health careers are 
are it's a huge business that it's not never going to keep growing and you're always going to be needed on the field so like uh, andrea was saying right at this moment there's a lot of uh, demand for students so as an advice for all of you that are getting to image in a nursing program that we patient now take it as a job interview where you have a few weeks to to do a great impression with your employees and that way when finish it you actually value it so i want you to stay here so yes for nursing for imaging placement is is very high i can say um can easily and also don't be uh, afraid of what's coming we have uh, great directors great clinic coordinators that will make sure to do um spots hospitals or clinical sites or just so them where they have a demand and they want to hire you know uh we try to avoid to send you to places where you're just free labor we'll make sure that we'll send you to hospital clinic site with the demand and they want to hire students any other questions Right. and then just one one last question um <clears throat> again going back to the application process what what would you guys think and I'd be interested to hear kind of everybody's answer is the most important thing for students to do to make sure that they have a strong application if they're they're interested in in joining one of these programs wow a strong application so well at least for the nursing program it is uh we do have a ranking process so everything that you do and turn in as a document is going to be considered and it's going to be um adding up as points when it comes to the ranking process so pretty much at the end we add everything up crunch the numbers and we that's how we determine who's going to be in because we need to have the stronger students i would say the main thing um and it's a uh, I would say along the board as well with imaging and my personal opinion it's going to be having a really high HESI score. So for me if you are anywhere we need a 75 but if you are anywhere above 80s and 85 um 80s and 85 you're competitive if you score anywhere between 85 and 90 or higher uh pretty much you can consider yourself in the program if you complete the rest of the requirements so for me and my personal opinion it would be um hesi scores that that are like above our expectations or our expectation it's a 75 we are looking for the 90s so if you scored a 90 pretty much you can consider yourself in Like I said, it's not like you're already in. Um you need to submit all the rest of your requirements, but it would definitely ensure a higher position in the ranking process for you. And uh same thing uh, for all the students coming in, uh we're looking for students that, you know, they can dedicate time to study and they're open-minded. Uh we have other students that when they join the program and they start uh, the core classes You know, they're saying, "Well, and my other program it wasn't like this, so I don't want to do." It. And that's when they start failing. But we have students that, you know, they're very very honest with us. They tell us, "You know what? I know I'm not the strongest student, but I really want to do this." And they all as the instructors, they'll ask their director, "Say, you know, point me in the right direction, tutor me." And uh, that's what we're looking for. We have like I mentioned, we have a lot of such stories amazing stories that of students that when they came in they were not the strongest one but they had that desire like i want to do change i want to make it i, I want to help patients and to that honesty they reach out to to the instructor you know, we we help them we tutor them in order for them to finish and we we have an uh you know from us uh thinking as like that person that you sent uh this this term uh we hire them amazing so you have me feel that uh we would join the program they have that uh desire of that's a, a big impact for the successful yeah i have to agree with Dr. and Dr. Gutierrez is the hesi is a big part of it is a part of it um and if you get to 
meet our program directors um, for the, the nursing program is um, program. They'll let you know exactly what the program is about. That I think is something really, really good. If you don't know what it is, or a person that has been on the field that you know what you're about to get yourself into, I think is ideal. Um, and also because they're able to see you telling them what made you sit on. So they're not only going to see it on paper, on your essay, but also I heard it from you. So I think that's a big impact as well for them to know you face to face and the person that is to start in their as well. All righty, so that, I think that was all the questions that we had submitted. And I think maybe Dr. G and Rebecca might have frozen out. Um, yeah. Okay, and I guess they're there. Okay, yeah, so that's all the questions we had submitted uh, from, from the people who were joining us to view. So I did wanna uh, take some time to thank you guys for, for your time. Uh, for preparing this information for the students and, and for sharing it with us. It, it's all great, great information, stuff that's very useful for the students and, and the advice is, is awesome as well. So thank you guys so much for your time. Um, I just wanted to ask if you guys don't, wouldn't mind just one more time before we close out, if you can just remind us uh, your name, your preferred method of contact uh, for students to contact you, and then again, where you're, where you're located. I know you mentioned it before, but just, just again to remind people at the end. Uh, my name is Javier Gutierrez. Uh, they call me Dr. G. Uh, you can find me on the 400 building, second floor. And my email is jgutierrez at southwestuniversity.edu. Well, my name is Rebecca, and I'm the imaging department assistant. Um, you can reach me by email, which is rhenningham at southwestuniversity.edu. And I'm also in the building upstairs to You need to unmute yourself, Andrea. Yes, again. So my name is Andrea Fong. Um, I'm located on the 600 building next to financial aid, and you can reach out to me to my email, afong at southwestuniversity.edu. So one last piece of advice that I've seen uh, through the time here, don't ever um, try to apply, don't lie to yourself, first of all. If you're applying to any of the specialty programs, don't go in for the money. It's going to be harder. It's going to be hard money to get. It's re It would really take a lot of passion from you, dedication. If you're in for the money, you're going to drop in the first terms. You need to put your heart to it. You need to go with passion. This is a pad of life. It's not just a career that you're going to be working on. Um, you're in to help people. You're in here because you care, love and one the best for the others and not the money. So if you need to put your heart on it and not just your time, it's the, your full person, your soul, your physical effort, it's everything on you. You need to give everything to successfully accomplish your goals and dreams. Cause at the end, this is most of you um, who are interested. It's a dream that you had when you were little. So don't go in for the money, go in because you love what you do, all right? That's all. That's my advice. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Again, I enjoyed the presentation. Great information. And again, you know, providing this information just shows how much support these individuals can provide to, to students who are interested in these programs. So please reach out to them if you have any questions or if you need more information. They're amazing people to talk to. Again, you know, bring Andrea some of her Simpson stuff, bring Dr. G uh star wars stuff and take Re rebecca some harry potter stuff and i'll go steal the harry potter stuff from rebecca uh, after you take it to her um but thank you again to the anybody who, who joined us to view as well uh we have future su teachers su talks coming up so just keep an eye on su learning for those uh but again one big thank you to our our presenters and you know we'll see everybody next time i hope everybody has a great afternoon all right so bye-bye thank you very much thank you.